Uh, ne what would never happen to you? Just getting into trouble, mm. um, getting in trouble with the police, mm. going to prison, Did all drugs. All that happen? Yeah. Killer, 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 You need the Kellervision app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Are you ready? <laughs> no. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Killer Keller podcast live and direct central London. Central as you need to be, could be, should be, or want to be. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Man, like sir. And of course, if you haven't checked out the Television app, get yourself involved. Free download. What's your excuse? No reason. iPhone, Android, you know the business. Um, we have a dear friend that has passed through. Unheard, unseen, not often speaking. You'll find her in various locations. One T's finest. Izzy, how are you? I'm good, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and a, bit, a lot of her friends are like, what the hell is she doing on my screen? What am I doing here? Yeah. You've said that, I think, like five times in a row <laughs> in the last 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, it's, I think it's going to be a surprise for everybody to, to see you on here. Because, uh, like I said at the beginning, you're, you're elusive. I, I like to hide from the camera a bit. <laughs> yeah. You were saying about the graph writers and uh, the photographers. The photographers, and... I just... I like to duck and move out the way when I see one. Why? Don't know. Anxiety. You really? Yeah. Well, it's because they, you, you, because I could, I could appreciate you. Like, you know, when people are doing a big piece of something and you're trying something risky, to have someone there watching you is just like, yeah, I've finished. I feel under pressure. Do you? Yeah. Is that a fact? I feel like people are watching me. <laughs> well, you'll be surprised because uh, you're about to get a lot of people watching now. This is the problem with areas of London that are, in, are noted as graffiti spots, isn't it? Mm. It's a bit of a... You, you're kind of living by the sword. It's, it's, it's like a soldier complaining and getting shot at. Because you're there to do a job, but you know there's going to be people there. It's a tough yeah. one, isn't it? Yeah. But you are more than just uh, a production piece artist. You've, to say you cut your chop, chops is like an understatement. Um, FDC... Train writer, trackside writer, 90s, White Trash, which if you guys don't know about that documentary, hold tight, sir, hold tight, FDC. <laughs> You're all up in that. And a lot of people don't know that you began as hardcore, as a hardcore graph writer mm. before the, you know, the the, the rude pieces and the, the, I mean, we're getting to the you pushing boundaries on your art later, but tell me about that time. Tell me how it all began. Well, um, it started when I was about 15. Yeah. Um, my brothers used to paint <clears throat> and I was a bit of a tomboy. So mm. when they played football, I played football. Mm. They started painting. I wanted to start painting. Mm. Um, and I think I got into it a little bit easier because I was a female and I think people were a bit more, invited me out a bit more and stuff. Mm. So uh, I started seeing this guy at college and he, paint, he painted as well. And um, What college was it? It was just basic sh shit tags what, what, everywhere. What, what college you go to? Croydon College. Okay. Hold tight, Croydon. I was born in Croydon, yeah. yeah hold tight, Croydon. Croydon. <laughs> yeah, you didn't just drop from a stalk. This was, you know, you were from the city. You were yeah. From, from London. Maybe. So um, we got caught in college and it was just really petty stuff. It was quite childish then. And then um, after that, I ended up meeting a few FDC writers, funnily enough, on a train. Mm -hmm. We were all tagging the trains. And I started going out of someone that was in the FDC. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like what brought me into that sort of environment. Yeah. Like really quickly. Super hyper quickly. Like from tagging like my college walls mm. and desks to going out and doing that. That must have... Um... Been like, I'm in second gear here. I'm just going to jump straight in fucking bit of a fifth. Shot. <laughs> and I was, a I was quite young as well. I was about 17, 16, 17 at the time. Yeah. Yeah, that's a kind of respectable age <clears throat> range for getting into it to mm. that level, isn't it? Yeah, I was just thrown straight out onto the track sides. <laughs> Literally. What, what did your parents think? 
My mum knew that I was a tomboy, so I was, it was a bit of a... Yeah. I've always gone against the grain a little bit, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Bit of a rebel. Yeah. Black sheep of the family. Mm -mm. Really? Yeah. You got, any, you got... How many brothers and so sisters? I've got two brothers and a sister, and I'm the eldest, so... Okay. Mm. So, you know, it's, it's down to the eldest to really fly the flag on bohemian, anarchic behaviour, isn't it? I haven't it? been the best role model. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but when, are, when, is, when is an eldest ever? Because I always think about this, just on a side note, by the way. Hey, um, I'm the eldest, and uh, there, there's no pamphlet for the parents to be like, yo, you're the first no. sibling, this is what you got to do. I think there's a lot of trial and error. With I the was eldest. the guinea pig. Yeah. I yeah. was the guinea pig of the family. So knowing that, if anything like my brother... And it shows. Yeah, they're, they're all right. The rest are all right. It's us yeah. that are <laughs> But there must have been some sort of like, yeah, like she, she's actually going out and... Pay. I guess because you was with your boyfriend at the time, that might have cushioned the, where is she? But, it made it a bit easier for me because I think I was a little bit, felt a little bit safer mm -hmm. uh, in that kind of environment because mm. I was with someone. Uh, I think if I was just a random girl... Mm. Going out into that with just a bunch of guys that weren't really looking out for me, it'd probably be a bit different. Yeah. Because you it would, I mean... I mean, I didn't know how to run across tracks and stuff when I first started doing it. So, like, you've got to be safe, haven't you? You've got to know mm. what you're doing. Mm. And I was with people that knew what they were doing, so yeah. that kind of helped me. Yeah. What? What? Explain the the trials of simple things like, Crossing a track, like what's yeah, the risk element? Nearly getting hit by trains. Like we used to paint track sides like Clapham Junction and stuff like that. And there's like so many tracks mm. and you never know where they're coming from. So you've if you know the right ways in, you know the right little mm. routes, if you're with experienced writers, it makes it much easier. Well, who are the normal, uh, content, you know, who are the usual bosses that were coming along for the ride? When you were painting, who did you used to roll with mostly? Um, Pest, Core, Dyer, mm -hmm. Zoned, Sir, Sir a bit. Um, Sir, Sir worked quite a lot, though. Did he? Yeah, he was always quite a busy guy. Um, yeah, you said we something interesting. Did... Actually, sorry, you did say something. Big shout out, Sir. Uh, hold tight. You this white trash video. Yeah. You saw from the jump that he was definitely onto this tech stuff. Didn't yeah, you? he was one step ahead of us all. <laughs> definitely one step ahead of us all. Uh, very business minded, and always had like new ideas. Mm. Um. Yeah, I. I could see it back then, early on, uh, when he put together the video. Mm. Because he was always focused on filming. And you've got to remember, back in those days, we didn't have camera phones. Mm. We didn't have the internet. Mm. We didn't all have cameras in our pockets. So a lot of stuff, a lot of footage was just unseen. Like There was so much that didn't get recorded. I bet. From that era. Because he wasn't there or just because there wasn't any <clears throat> foresight? Well, that's what I'm saying. He was one of those people that captured all of that sort of stuff because not a lot of people captured mm. that much footage back then. Yeah. You had to have that sort of mentality, like, mm. oh, I didn't have a video camera. Because yeah. it was video cassette back then. Yeah. So when he made that video, I remember him. He was basically up for weeks. You've got to put the video cassette in and press record mm -hmm. to program it off your video camera. So he was selling shitloads of those Mad. videos back then so he was having to manually like just play and play them through to record um and it was a very very big video it's huge yeah i mean when i think white trash i'm like yeah that was for me that was like my child like you guys you um sir dyer char Zoned, 100% zoned. All these guys, oh, all these... Oh, yeah, yeah, child as well. You're oh, right, child. Like, honestly, all of these... It was, they, that was my childhood when I come through from Sussex into yeah. you guys. It was a lot of... He captured a lot of raw footage, <clears throat> London stuff. And I don't think there are many. No. Or any. I don't know what other videos there are that are like that. And it's... it's, it's 
it's ahead of its time in the sense that yeah. if you was to get a Kodak camera, you'd have to go somewhere to get it processed. When you got it on a video and you got your own video recorder, yeah. no one sees shit. <laughs> but no one, no writers didn't walk around with video cameras. No, it's just unheard of. Well, now we've got our camera phones, we can record things much easier. Mm. Um, so yeah, he was one step ahead with all that, and he was. I'm glad he did it though, because mm. we wouldn't have all these memories otherwise. That w there's a few handful of moments with you in that episode that people would never notice, but they know. But those who know know that can only be described as like the definitive. <laughs> that's you in there. I didn't even there. know I was in it. Yeah, I didn't know I was in it. Well, until people For just a while. started. Yeah, really, until people just was like, yeah, that's you. Mm. That's a blowing your mind. I mean, there's not. There's no other documented, well, not many, videos of that era. Steel injection? I've, got, that's I've got nothing, really. Yeah. I've, I've lost all my old photos as well. Have you? Yeah. Oh, man. Mm. Where'd they go? Just moving houses and shit? it was all printed photos. It's not digital, is it? Yeah. So, like, I've, I've got all my stuff backed up now, but mm. back then, you lose your photos and mm. can't get them back. Tell me a story. Tell me some. Tell me some. You know, mission stories. Tell me some of your favourite moments. Oh, my favourite moments. I don't know. We used to just get drunk before we used to go. Did painting. you? Yeah. <laughs> and I think that, like, I felt always felt a little bit anxious going up painting. And I've always felt like I wasn't good enough to go up painting with them because I was like more of a beginner. I think. But when do you ever, when do you ever end? I don't know. I think I still feel like, I still feel like that now. But why? Because you don't, it never ends, does it? Because I think you're just always learning something new. Exactly. It's just always, there's always a new learning process. Um, but painting track sides, <clears throat> I loved. Yeah. I just loved hopping across tracks and mm. I think it's like a bit of a, I don't know what it was. It was like quite a thrill-seeking kind of behaviour, mm. um, which I still crave now. Yeah. But I don't. I don't do it. Yeah. I'm a mum now, and does it ever leave you, like that craving, of, of the, the adrenaline, adrenaline of it? I've found a way to have that adrenaline in a different way now, through being more artistic, mm. because. Let's be honest, my graph was not great back then. So what you this this gives you the chance to hone in a lot more on things well, that you would have neglected yeah, back then. Yeah, like when you're doing track sides and you're with really good artists, mm. they're painting really fast and their stuff looks clean. Mm. My stuff looks shit. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> but now I've I'm focusing more on like my techniques and my can control. Mm. And I've got more time, and I'm painting in the light. I'm not painting in the dark. Man, there's some people out there that would could do with going out and getting some of those life lessons in, in n not even just in graph, just studio singers get on stage, do fucking some graph. Do you know what I mean? Just get out there and you know overcome certain anxieties and things like that. I think it's it, you kind of done it from the top end. You mm. went in hard. Kind of gives you the right to passage. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So whatever, and this is just my opinion, like if if, if I take away anything from my career, I'm like, well, uh, I have to set all this shit up myself, but at least I cut my chops and I know how to do it now. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a funny one. It is a mad one, isn't it? Um. You aren't scared of pushing yourself, and I've noticed this with your pieces. You really push, whether it's calligraphy style, like embossed looking, bold colours with real ref defined lining. You really do push yourself, don't you? Yeah. The way I look at it is if I'm going to do legal stuff, it's got to be good. Mm -hmm. I can easily go and do illegal stuff in the dark. Mm. I'm not going to look great, get my name out there. Mm. But I don't need to do that. I don't feel like I'm at that point in my life now where that's important to me. Mm -hmm. um, so I like to challenge myself artistically mm. and creatively. And I like to 
test myself to see if I can do things that I don't think I can do. Mm. Put myself under a lot of pressure, and I've had a lot of tantrums when it's not gone my way. But I, I, te- I, I do seem to just seem to wing it a mm. little bit. Mm-mm. I try things, and I'm like, this is probably not going to work. Talking of winging it, like doing a piece on a train on a plane, you know. Oh yeah, I've got to say, that is probably like the highlight. I know it doesn't, it might not seem like it, but it's not the same as painting a train. It's a fucking plane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's I love you don't it. get more like... Well, do you know what? I was inspired by that. Um, I went to Boontown Festival mm. in, I think it was 2019 one, and Voida did a plane. They had like a half bit of a plane mm. in the middle of the festival. And I looked at it and I thought... I'd love to do something like that. So um, <clears throat> it just sat at the back of my mind. Mm. And then someone called me and mentioned that they were looking to do a plane. And I just thought, you know what? I'm going to do some research. And I found one. <laughs> so, yeah. you did, so it was sourced by you? You it found it? It wasn't actually. Oh, yeah, I found it. It wasn't legal, though. Yeah. It was um, It was on private land. and That makes it even more cool. That's what happened. I had to I had to break the rules this time. <laughs> I thought, you know what, I'm not an illegal writer anymore, but on this occasion, seeing as it's an aeroplane, I might as well I might as well Get do it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Got to. So I took took a few people with me yeah. and we just went and done it. Spat was there? Spat and Bosk. Hold tight, Spat yeah. Bosk, come on. Yeah. Oh jeez. Um So, so, so yeah, happened? that was a bit of a buzz. It felt a bit like painting a train. But not. What happened? <laughs> so I bought fucking sandwiches and everything thought we was having a picnic there. <laughs> and it turns out that we're not like, it's not it's like private property and stuff. And like got people looking at us out of windows and stuff. So. Um, Did you get ushered off? We took good. the piss. Really? We stayed there for a while and I was just running up and down the top of the plane. <laughs> asking for photos. Thought it's Joe, I'm not gonna how many times am I gonna get to paint a no, plane? It doesn't get more rock I'm trying to find another one, but I can't <laughs> it's a find new fad. one. <laughs> it's a new thing, you know. <laughs> yeah, so um I felt like it was like painting steel, so it was like painting a, a train, but more curved. Mm. Which is a bit more difficult. Cause because as you go up, the off the back spray. The top of the plane curves yeah. that way and then the bottom curves in. Yeah. And so I tried to make it as big as possible, so Without falling. I should not have thought about that. So you've got to remain... Because of the height of the, the plane and the fact it curves, you could be losing some of your top of the of the piece for for the fade because you can't get a I just line. I just did a basic fill. I just did a dub because mm. I thought, you know what? Yeah. I don't think this is going to be possible. It's not going to be possible to make it look really good. It looks sick, though. Yeah, you've seen it, yeah? Of course, yeah. Look fucking yeah. fire. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, just yeah. That's a highlight of my career, I'd say. Yeah, it's fucking <laughs> so great. So in an aeroplane, mm. um, the calligraphy look that that style. Big shout out to Artful Dodger, of course, and and Spire, of course, and all the people that you know are in this lane. But you, you, again, you, what the calligraphy? Yeah, yeah, the that is some. You're you're really. I like the fact that you're pushing that. It kind of goes back to a more minimal. Look, I've got to say, my biggest inspiration yeah. for, for me doing this, this style, is Buster Duke. Buster Duke. Tattooist. From Mexico. Tattooist. Yes. Yeah. I'll type Buster. I love him. Mm, He's really. the best. He has been the biggest influence um, for me with this style. Mm. And um, I kind of like a lot of my stuff's influenced from a lot of his mm. work. Mm. Tattooing is tattooing has it kind of falls parallel with with graph in that it's the technology's really fucking pole vault with it forward. Mm. I kind of like the fact that you're you're taking inspiration outside the graph mm. from from that. It's that? quite structured though this style. It's a bit more structured. It's not it's not like the graph I used to do. Mm. Um, more structured lettering. Mm. So there are more rules. And, like, there's not as many rooms for mistakes because it's not like when you're freestyling and you're, mm. 
It's got to be perfect. Everything's got to be in proportion. Yeah. But I think I like that because I try... I'm a perfectionist without being perfect, if mm. that makes any sense. So I, I never feel like anything mm. is good enough. Again, that's just the artist. That's just a, being an artist, I guess, yeah. yeah. Some people can throw shit out and not feel any which way about it. There's something I love about that as well. Mm. Particularly a graph because, you know, you've got the hand style of a tag and then you've got the full-blown piece. And yeah. I kind of like where it all sits. But then there's some people that, like you say, uh, you know, graph is like a thing. Mm. But I'm pretty sure that with the way that you process stuff, you could probably do tattooing. Anything well, with... this is a lot of people keep saying that to me. And I'm not sure whether I could. Why? Well, I don't draw. Huh? So I don't draw. I don't draw outlines. I don't draw characters. I don't draw anything. I just paint straight to wall. Right. So you don't... So the, what we see as yeah. the final... It has no preparation other than you've got the colours. And I've never... Most... A lot of the, the characters and stuff I've done, I've never drawn in my life. So how the fuck are you getting proportionate... How are you getting... I don't know. That's mad. <laughs> I just do it by eye. Most of it, I've done, I've done a few things on grid. Like I've done Wonder Woman on a grid and mm. I've gridded out a couple of, like, characters in the past. But most of everything I do, I've, I've, I don't use anything like a grid for. And I've never drawn any of the stuff more than once, really. So, like, I'll do a character I've never drawn in my life and it will just comes out. That's mad. It's like some sort of, like... I feel like I channel, like, the image in my eyes and I project it onto the wall. That's crazy. I don't know how to explain it. Some Rain Man shit. <laughs> well, it's not as advanced as I'd like it to be, but I'd, I'd like to start experimenting with something a bit more... Uh, technical, a little bit more complicated. I am trying to challenge myself more. That's just, don't, don't wonder you get like anxiety before you go in because you're not actually you've got nothing planned. No, I don't. I don't know how it's going to turn out. So that's that's almost like your thrill seek that you would have. Oh, that's crazy. That is my thrill seek. Yeah, and I even laugh to myself when I'm painting. I'm like, what am I? What have I got myself into yeah, today? Yeah. I've set myself up for another challenge. That explains what because when we first met you, it was like. Oh, I'm out of this paint, I'm out of that paint. It's because yeah. you're you're moving forward and you just don't have the... You can't... Because I don't plan it. Yeah. That's why I, I, I like to bring my car out, boot full of paint, loads of colours in it and just see what happens. <laughs> see what I feel like I'm going to do. <laughs> so OG. <laughs> I love that. Fail to prepare. Prepare to fail, innit? Mm. That's fucking sick. So literally you just ball up with like a boot full of paint. Yep. I'm always driving around with it. You know that stays that, there. <laughs> some people call that dedication. That, that uh, it's it's there's a compulsive obsessiveness there. I was just about to say. I think it's an obsession. Yeah, it's an obsession. Is is um is graph an obsession? Is the thrill seek that of that? Well, I think it's it keeps me. Focused and balanced. Mm. So, so for some people, going out painting, they'd want to get drunk and stuff and mm. get high. But I think for me, it has the opposite effect. Therapy. Yeah, I find it therapeutic. And also, it stops me from getting pissed up the night before and having a hangover and missing, mm. missing out on painting, which I've done. Mm. So I've been very inconsistent. Mm. So... I've only just started painting again in last October, but I had like a whole year off. Mm. So I'm always so taking seasonal. silly breaks. No, it's just because I was drinking every weekend. Okay, yeah, that does. And then I've got a hangover and I don't want to paint. It takes two or three days for a hangover nowadays. Well, me, for right? me, it takes about five. So, yeah, yeah. so oh, you go in. Yeah, we do <laughs> go in. When I go in, I go in. So I, I, I don't like to do that because then I miss out. Mm. So I've been tr staying sober. I've not. The past year, I've been staying sober, mm. getting up early, mm. going out painting, making the most of my day. Mm. And it's been keeping me on the straight and narrow. You were, yeah, 
sometimes just having the reward of, of having achieved something that you're like, you never thought, you started with nothing. Yeah. Not even a sketch. But by the end of it, you were, that's, that's... I have very high expectations of myself and sometimes I've got to learn that I can't always pull it off. Mm. I'm human. Mm. So I'm learning to accept it that sometimes not, it doesn't always come out perfectly, but it's been all right so far. Mm. <laughs> this year I've learned a lot. Yeah. A lot. Talk to me. What have you learned? Well, I've learned, I feel like I've kind of found my style, a style that I feel um, comfortable with mm. and I feel satisfied with it. And I think since I've been painting, I've never had that feeling. I've it's, never liked my outlines. You give yourself time to yourself to do it rather than influenced anyway. I think it's anywhere. just taken me time to find... I've also had a chance to experiment yeah. with styles. Yeah. Whereas when I was doing illegals, it was like that London, that basic London style, that sort of outline that mm -hmm. a lot of people used. Mm. Um, quick, mm. quick to put up. But now I'm... I'm give, I've got more time to experiment. Mm. Yeah, I know what you mean. When I see your stuff as well, like the characters, you always, I've always loved a, a piece that has that incorporates a character or incorporates something that draws eye to, people's eye to something. Mm. You know, and, and I know that's a, a real basic level kind of primal thing for people to see a, a Woody Woodpecker or a fucking Donald Duck, and it's like, oh, look. look. But, you know, your stuff is also readable and the fact that you can contrast and do the two mm. individually or together is fucking great, isn't it? Well, I think it also appeals to a different audience as well when you put characters in. Mm. So, like, lettering's more focused on, the, like, the graffiti scene and people that understand it. Yeah. Whereas when you put a character in there, it becomes, like, a universal language. Yeah, it's, a, it's the that thing, That kids like. Yeah. People that don't understand about graffiti also like. But I know you mentioned this earlier, and it was something that you, that you wanted to lay bare a little bit, was the fact that people think because you've done a Mickey Mouse, <laughs> you ain't done the graft, and you don't... <laughs> it's like, yeah, no, I'm not that good. I'm not that. Well, because I do legal walls now, so people see me painting and they just think hmm. I'm an arty-farty <laughs> student or something, or... <laughs> I don't know, they don't know that I, what I used to do. Yeah. And I have had people going, oh, you're not a real... You're not a real writer. Yeah because I'm painting Bugs Bunny or something. But yeah. They don't know how long I've been doing it and when I started and yeah. what I've painted and what I've done yeah. throughout my, my teens. Mm. Um, so people do judge. Mm. Probably because I'm a girl as well, I don't know. There's a stereotype with girls and graph at the moment. I'm seeing a trend with, with kind of partially nude, suggestive... <laughs> Where's the graph gone? No, it's just a bikini. not me. Yeah, it's not the one, is no, it? No, I'm not going to do it. No. You might catch me in a pair of leggings or something, but that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not the one. It should, it should no, really just... I'm not going to be out painting in a bikini anytime soon. No. <laughs> no. It's overrated as well. It gets a bit messy, I'm pretty sure. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Uh, Leak Street, all those places. Now, before, there was, just was not these... There was no... That couldn't you. London couldn't facilitate it. Mm. Now you've got the freedom to be able to paint alongside whoever. Do you feel like, how from the beginning and where you were to now, from the illegal to now, what changes have you seen that's been significant in the London scene? Um, photography, like the photography behind it all yeah. is completely different. Um, and the quality and the standard of graffiti has become so, like, precise and mm. advanced. Mm. Um, I don't just think it's the technology of cameras, but I think um, it's become... I don't know, the art's kind of developed. Mm. Uh, I, th I looked back at the 90s and everything was a bit more simple. Mm. Styles were a bit more simple. Um, and the lifestyle as well. Yeah. Yeah. It was a lot more easy going as well. I think there was less pressure um, to look good yeah. with graffiti, for your graph to look as good. I think there was 
it was more about getting your name out there. Mm. Whereas now, people are getting their name out there on Instagram. Like easy. Anyone can. You don't need to go and paint a train or do a track side. Mm. You can just go to a legal wall. And if it looks good and you've got enough hashtags onto it, it's going to pop. It's going to circulate. Mm. So that's how people are getting out there now. And there's no lifestyle to that. Well, I'm, listen, hey, actually, retract. I'm sure there <laughs> is, and that there is the hardcore. There's a different lifestyle. Exactly, it's two different it's worlds. It's changed. Now. Do you think um, street art took away the style in graffiti? Yes. It's definitely taken away the style. And it's taken away the sort of free-flowing sort of like nature of it all. And I think everything's over-planned and overly um, thought out. And um, everything's just really perfect now. It's not raw. Mm. It's not raw art anymore, raw mm. graph. Mm. Everything is perfected and... Uh, it's just not rough around the edges like it used to be. Mm. Yeah, you. I, that's one thing I used to really admire. Again, just using FDC as an example. I liked. I liked the fact that you could see the the energy in the piece based on the actions that went to make it. Yeah. I think Mode Two said something similar actually on Kings and Toys, but it's the the documentary Kings and Toys. But uh, the fact that okay, that was a little bit off. That was a little bit. But then there was. Look what he's doing. He's doing it on top of a fucking building. You've got to remember the environment that it was being done in. So now it's just all got. It's just mainstream now, isn't it? Mm. It's mainstream, and anyone can do it. Mm. And like people buy paint now. Mm. We never used to buy paint. Did you still act too? You used we to used to steal shop. everything. We never paid for paint. Mm. <laughs> it's just things have changed. How a tough lot. was that lifestyle back then? Hmm. It was exciting. Mm. It was sometimes it was scary and sometimes it was intimidating, but it was fun. But I've got to remember, I wasn't a mother. I was carefree. Mm. I thought I was invincible. Mm. I never thought, oh, it's never going to happen to me or whatever. So I always had that kind of like rebellious nature. Ne what would never happen to you? Just getting into trouble. Mm. Um, Getting in trouble with the police, mm. going to prison, Did all drugs. That happen? Yeah. Did all that happen? So you all went to prison? It. Yeah. Wow. How long are you going for? I went to prison like four times. Really? Yeah. Mainly for crimes, make, just going out making money. Yeah. Shoplifting, theft, yeah. credit cards. Mm. It was just that lifestyle. And drugs? Yeah. And mm. I think once you get into that lifestyle, it... It becomes ca a casual thing. It's not like you're not scared anymore. It becomes the norm. Yeah, you're not scared. You do it once and you start to become fearless and you think you're invincible. It's a bit like, did, did you feel like a spiral of consistency developing? Like you just didn't feel it? You just wanted to get I didn't paid? Notice, I didn't notice anything at the time. Really? Nah, I look back at things and I'm like, shit, this is where it all went wrong. Mm. This is where I started to go downhill. For a whole period? For how long? I think it was like basically started painting, squat parties, raves, mm. drugs, mm. getting mm. on it all the time, mm. thrill-seeking behaviour, mm. feeling wild, feeling free, mm -hmm. just out all night. Just a bit of craziness, really. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, you're on the ground, you're, you're in... A Totally different environment than what you thought start. I dropped out of uni and everything. Really? Yeah, fucked everything up. Mm. Well, you know what? This is this is all subject to debate because I have these <laughs> conversations with people all the time and people are like, yeah, I have these regrets. Da, 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 da. I wish I'd done this a bit more. Da. But the truth is, is that there ain't no roadmap. And, there isn't. And I wouldn't you know, be who I am yeah. if I didn't go through what I went through. So yeah. who knows? How hard was rehab? Oh, rehab. Um, very difficult time of my life. Mm. Um, at the time, I didn't think it was helping me mm. because it was diff really hard.
But it's taken me about 14 years to even look back at it and think, do you know what? There are, I've taken a lot from that and learned a lot from it. Mm. Those are fucking life lessons. I think everybody in their darkest moments. This is what stopped me from painting. Really? It is the drug scene, rave scene. Um, it took me away from painting. Yeah. And I lost focus of mm. not just going out and painting, I lost focus of my career and studying. Mm. And it was just like a, years of binging. Mm years of addiction um, and that's where I disappeared from painting and I stopped painting for 18 years it's a long time yeah yeah it's so I'm not going to say how old I am but yeah. <laughs> give my age away but I did stop painting for 18 years mm. and I accidentally started painting again what was it like suddenly from 18 years of not painting and being in a very different headspace, a different you. And then... Being oh, a yeah, mum. I remember this thing. Oh, being really. a mum. Yeah. I didn't even Right, really... so you were a mum as well? I'm that, a mum, yeah, yeah. So I've got a yeah. teenager. Yeah. So one day, it's quite random actually, and I would not be painting now if it wasn't for this. Go on. Spat messaged me and said, oh, do you want to come out and paint? It's like, I've not painted in 18 years, mate. I'm not coming out painting. It's like, why don't you just try it? I was like, oh, I've got no paint with me. It's like, I've got paint. I was like, I brought my daughters with me. It's like, bring her, I'm doing a legal wall. So I was like, all right then. I thought, this is just random. I just thought, you know what? How old was it, your daughter I'm... at the time? This was about three years ago, maybe four years ago. Oh, dude. So she was about 10. And, Hold um, on, mum's only going to go and do a fucking piece. How fucking cool is that? Took her out with me. Yeah, that's brought her with me. <laughs> so she's going around painting bins and bushes and benches and stuff. Yeah. And I started painting and something just came into my head. Like, it just took me back. Mm. He was like, you can still paint. Full just, circle. He was like, you can still paint, you know. And I was just like, I can. Yeah. I can still paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I felt like a buzz. Mm. Even though it was a legal wall, it just gave me like little flashbacks mm. of when I used to paint. So I kind of like got a proper buzz out of it. And then I haven't stopped painting since. So sick. Yeah. So sick. So kind of, it wasn't really like my intention. But it just kind of, mm. that's the way it worked. Yeah. Swings and roundabouts, innit? Mm. you got to have a life, you got to have a life of many lives for you to ever take stock and, you know, know knowledge of self and all that, mm. innit? Um, the characters you do are sick. They're fucking... I don't know how I do them. Big, big up Arrow about. as well, actually, while we're on the subject, because he's a guy that... Arrow, yeah. Yeah, he smashes, like, the characters. Actually, and... he's another one from the 90s. Mm. Um, I actually met up with him the other day, but, yeah, he's another one from yeah. that era of era. me painting. Yeah. Network Terror. Do you remember that, NT? Mm. <gasps> yeah, FDC, all that era. And those guys... Corset a rub off on you and coming back to it later on mm. and being like, yeah, well, hold on. This is like riding a bike. I got this. Do you know what, though? I didn't realise how big it was back then. Mm. I kind of just fell into it. I didn't realise how... Like, the, how big it had become. The history behind it and how people see it. Mm. View graffiti? No, with, like, FDC going out and painting with, like, such big artists. You bought, you bear witness to something in the flesh that, you know, I'd only wish to have seen. You know, FTC, DDS, I you did know. did feel like PFB. I was a bit out of my depth, I've got to say. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you were... I did it. I yeah. still did it, but I felt... Uh, it was quite intimidating. 
you were in the mix of like bordering, like with all due respect, everybody. That there was, especially in the nineties, there was this hooligan aspect. It was crazy. <laughs> And you were like bang to enter in the eye of the storm. <laughs> it was fun. It was really fun. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's all changed now. So times have changed. Do you like it though? Do, do you I like, like the fact that do you, I know you know ph- photography aside? Do you like the fact that you can bring your daughter, or you can just get a ring, a casual call? Hey, look, we're down Stockwell. Do you want to come? Yeah. That must be pretty cool. I've met some really, really nice people through painting. Mm. And I think social media's also changed it in. Like, you just meet, you can just meet Mm. so many writers now. Mm. It's different. Mm. You're not meeting people on trains anymore, tagging, Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Um, sitting at train stations and stuff. Uh, You're meeting people online, you're networking. It's it's easier to network now Mm. and meet meet artists that you admire you can just like it's much easier to to connect with people uh, without having sure. to meet them in the flesh oh hold tight nurx by the way that was who nurx was yeah. yeah that's who was with what i was painting with that day yeah it's a mad web network web you 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 but this is what i mean yeah. and this is all like quite new mm. it's all quite new to me um she says i know what you mean though I know what you mean. It's, it's new now, but it's the old Well, new. it's because I had 18 years out. Yeah, yeah. So I came back into it and everything has changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like legal walls and buying mm. paint. Mm. It's just... Never did it. But it's refreshing that somebody from that particular era ain't talking about that era. They're kind of more on this. Well, it's different now. And, uh, you know, although I was there, I kind of... I, I, I was there in heart and spirit, but yeah. I kind of... I'm more in it now. That's kind of... That's, that's, I only uh, ever refreshing. painted with a fat cap back in the 90s. Mm. Now we've got, you've got all these different caps for different things and skinny mm. caps and mm. it's just like... It's just a different way of painting. Yeah. It's got a bit geeky, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit geeky What do you think we're now, doing right? a podcast for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very geeky. Yeah, yeah. This is techers on... T- Fucking on camera, yeah, yeah. We love this shit, you know. This is this... I do love it. I have, I have turned into a bit of a geek. Mm-hmm. If you see the boot of my car, <laughs> why well, is it just like it's, it's like a it's like a there's store. no room for anything else. So really? yeah, my shopping has to go in the back seat. Food shopping, too much. Yeah, portable portable uh, graffiti store. <laughs> Portable graffiti supplies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's crossed my mind a bunch of times, you know. There should be a graffiti order thing, for like Uber, but for mm. paint. You know, if there's enough Hall of Fames everywhere, then surely there, there should be a courier this service. another thing. There's a lot of paint shops have opened up now because mm. back when I used to paint, it wasn't easy to get paint like it is now. At all. Now you can get them everywhere. Mm. Little paint shops popping up everywhere. Mm. So. Which is great. Yeah. Which is great. But um, although we talk about Hall of Fames and whatnot, there is this constant threat, like some being threatened to be closed down, others bordering, others being completely regentrified yeah. and acceptable. In So Trellick, Trellick's yeah. one. But then Stockwell's the complete opposite end, isn't it? Yeah. I wonder if there's enough uh, places to paint up against the um, number of uh, stores there are. Supply demand, mm. isn't it? There's got to be a location for people to paint. But I think there's painters everywhere. Yeah. And I still think that there are a lot of train painters and stuff like that. But the thing is, with illegal pa- illegal writing now, most illegal writers don't want to put their stuff on social media. Mm. So it's kind of like a catch-22, really. It's like you want to get seen. Mm. You don't want to get seen on Instagram. You don't want to be making a an account and posting all your train yards and stuff on there because it's yeah. incriminating. Yeah. So that's where it has changed. So it's like, it's one or the other. You can't, I don't think you can have both. You can't have Insta fame Mm-mm. and just post, be doing trains every day. So there are always spots for, there's always, there are writers all over, all over the country. For all different things. For different reasons, yeah. And heck, do planes if you can't do trains, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'll be <laughs> looking for another plane very soon. 
Sigh. So. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's like plain hunters. That's what I want to do. I'm looking to paint some like random stuff. Mm. Like some vans, find some like buses, mm. abandoned coaches or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm really like I really want to do stuff like that. I'm not gonna be out bombing trains and stuff, buses and trains like I used to. Mm. So this is kind of like a it's not legal, but it's like semi legal. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you know what I mean? Like even if you got caught, I don't know if you'd probably get nicked for it. It's like trespassing, but I'm not I didn't paint British Airways, you know. <laughs> Yeah. So it's a bit different. Yeah, yeah. Hey, give me, cut me some slack, you know what I mean? It was just parked up there, you know what I mean? It was on a field somewhere. It's not the British Airways on it, does yeah. it? It's true. Yeah. It's true. Is that part of the thrill seek? Do you think Do you think that thrill seeking you after will ever die? No, because I secretly still want to go and do a train. <laughs> it's not a sec- well, it's not a secret anymore. Not a secret but, now, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I do. But I just need to remember, like, now I wor- I'm working and... Mm-hmm. I'm not a teenager anymore. Mm. Yeah. I don't need to be getting in trouble for vandalism at my age. Yeah. Not not when you've got styles to develop and profess. Well, that's what I mean. I'm focusing on my on the artistic side of it now. Mm. And hopefully maybe one day in the future get some work and stuff out of it. Mm. I've done a few little odd jobs here and there, but I would like to build a career out of it. Mm. But because I don't draw... I don't make canvases and stuff like that, so... Not your thing? Well, I just go straight on the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's doing it from... Yeah. I like yeah, yeah. using a spray cam. Mm. I don't I want to sit there with a pencil. Not the one, I'm is it? At home, sitting there with a pencil, drawing stuff all day. Yeah, yeah. I like the atmosphere yeah. of painting a wall. It's theatre. Yeah. It's different than painting a canvas. Yeah. And I know a lot of people that can draw some amazing things, but they can't draw them on a wall. No. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, may your uh, um, tenacity and drive and thrill seek continue. And fuck, man, get some more planes down here. There's got to be loads. I mean, let's really. I know. Late, Anyone knows any planes? Hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyone want to shout out? Um, Oh, I want to shout out to Spat, um, One T Crew, Buster Duke, um, who else? Oh, and my daughter, Yaz. Um, I think that's it. That's it. Yeah. One T Crew, hold tight. Is he inside the place? <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Fucking Thank smashed you. It. Thanks for having me. That was all right, wasn't it? All right. We'll see know. when it comes we'll to see. <laughs> Izzy, one, two, kill a kill podcast. You. Listen, you stay lucky, people sharing is caring, all right? Spread the word, tell a friend to tell a friend. Stay out of trouble. Peace. That was scary.